Welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to be making some raised beds for my greenhouse. As you can see I've got all the timber here. It's all rough sown pine and you don't really need anything fancier than that uh, for this particular project. However, if you do have the cash I do suggest you use large wood or cedar. Basically they will be far better when it comes to contact with moisture and outdoor projects. However, in this case I'm actually going to be sealing the wood and I'm going to show you what I'm actually going to be putting inside of these boxes to make sure the moisture will not affect those boards so much. Now for me this project is all about utility and usefulness so I'm not going to make them to look super super pretty they just need to do the job and they need to do the job well. To cut all the timber to the right lengths, I'm just going to be using my miter saw. However, if you don't have a miter saw, just use whatever facility you've got to cut these to the right length. In total, I'm going to have four raised beds. Two of them will be 300 centimeters long by 48 centimeters wide. However, my boards are not that long. So what I'm going to do, um, I've cut them to 270 centimeters and I'm going to cut pieces that are 30 centimeters long. And later on, we'll put everything together. One of them will be 236 centimeters long and 56 centimeters wide. And the last one that will go in the middle will be 224 centimeters long and 74 centimeters wide. If you're planning to do a similar project in your greenhouse, obviously the dimensions of um, these raised beds will depend on the size of your greenhouse. In my case, the space I can use inside of my greenhouse, that's 358 centimeters long and 236 centimeters wide. I've cut some smaller pieces, they're about 20 centimeters long, uh, thickness probably about 1.7, 1.8 uh, centimeters, okay? And I'm gonna use these as anchors. So what we need to do is to cut one end at a sharp angle so it goes into the soil and keeps our boxes in place. For that, grab yourself a piece of two by four and cut it to 45 degree angle. Now change the angle from 45 to 15. Grab the piece that we just cut and a clamp. Lower the blade down, put the piece, the tip of that piece against the blade, just like so, and clamp this piece down. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna offer our piece just like so, put it against the fence and make the cut. Now the boards I'm using for this project, they are 16 centimeters wide, okay? And it's a little bit too small for my liking for the raised bed. So what I did, an extra board I just cut in half, so that will give me about seven and a half centimeters extra. And now I just have to connect both of these pieces together. Now don't worry that the boards are not absolutely perfect and there's a gap. Don't worry about that at all as this is just the frame. The soil itself will be held by foundation foil that looks like this, okay? So it does have these dimples right and i'm going to tell you why this is absolutely perfect for this later on in the video so how are we going to connect both of the pieces together well in the simplest way possible cut out a few extra pieces like that put it on both of the boards screw it in bob's your uncle simple as that just before you do that make sure to clamp both of the boards together so they don't move on you and they are as close as possible to each other and now you can pre-drill the holes and drive in the screws.
However, two of the boxes, as I mentioned before, the boards I had they were not long enough. So I've got these two boards that are 2.7 meters long and I need them to be three meters. So I've cut out shorter pieces that are 30 centimeters long. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna stagger them so they're easily connected together and it will be a much stable construction. And now we can drive in the screws to connect the pieces together. All right, with all the sides, fronts and the backs are now connected into those larger boards, larger panels, um, I'm gonna sand everything down just slightly, just to break the edges on all the boards and to get rid of any splinters, anything like that, just to achieve a more or less smooth surface. However, I'm only gonna do that on the outside perimeter. On the inside, I'm gonna leave it as is. For me, the next step is actually to seal the wood so it will last a little bit longer. Now the sealer I'm using is actually in color black, which corresponds to the color of my greenhouse and to my raised beds that I already do have in my vegetable garden. Now I do not worry about the chemicals that are in the wood sealer as we are going to use the foil that will be inside of our box. If you don't want to use the foil that will separate the soil from the wood itself, um, you can actually just use the bare wood as is. However, it will not last that long. In my case, I'm gonna be applying two coats of the sealer. Right, two coats later with the wood sealer, everything's now dry so we can go to the next stage. Before we actually gonna put um, the pieces together to create the box itself, we need to add the foundation foil, okay? So the dimples, they need to be facing inwards, okay? Inside of our box. And the way I'm gonna attach it to the box itself is just with some staples. You can buy a staple gun, electric, or just a manual one like I have. I'm gonna go flush with the top of our boxes. However, at the bottoms, I'm actually gonna leave a little bit over so I can fold it over so the pieces of timber will not be lying on the soil directly. I think this is a great solution. It will make sure that the soil does not touch the wood itself. And at the same time, it will make sure, thanks to the dimples, any moisture cut between the wood and the foil itself, it will evaporate, it will have a way to escape. So hopefully the timber, the wood itself will last a lot longer. At least that's the experience I've got from the raised beds I've got in my garden. And now it's time to put everything together. Now, as you can see, I'm just pre-drilling the holes, driving in the screws. I'm holding everything with clamps. However, if you don't have them, just ask somebody to help you out with this stage. If you do have a large square, also check for squareness of the box itself. With that done, we can actually add the middle support. So basically, under pressure of the soil, the boxes will not bow out. Again, just driving in a few screws and it will hold just fine. If you do find some loose foil, now it's time to staple it down. And with that done, our first box is ready. Now I'm gonna continue in the same way with the rest of them. And check this out. They are now in the final position. I've added the decorative stone around them and they are ready to take a bit of soil. I think they come out really, really nice. They're fitting perfectly in my greenhouse. Hopefully my tomatoes and anything else I will be growing here will be happy with this little place. And there you go guys, the project is finished. Nice and simple, no fancy timber, anything like that. And hopefully this will last for years to come. Now I hope I inspired you a little bit to do something similar if you do have a greenhouse. I think this layout is absolutely perfect. I can have single rows of tomatoes around and then two rows in the middle as well. But you know, 
we'll see. And if you want to see what I'm going to be growing here and how and with what I will be filling these boxes up, then I will have a video on that on my second channel, Casual Gardening and Cooking. I'm going to leave a link to that channel down below in the description of this one and in the pinned comment as well if you want to check out, as I said, how I'm going to fill them up and how I'm going to plant my tomatoes and other vegetables and maybe some fruits as well. For today that's all, thank you so much for watching but hold on before you go I do have some really cool playlists just over here, go and have a look, check them out and maybe you'll find your next video to watch. Take care!